Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged to welcome a very tall leader from the world of corporate India and an entrepreneur from Chennai, India, Mr. G.S. Ramesh. Mr. Ramesh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Ramesh is the chairman of the Liam Group, and he was confirmed conferred with the Managerial Excellence Award by the Madras Management Association. So, uh, please share with me your journey from working at the Tata Group in 1977 to now forming the Liam Group, and uh, which has a presence globally. Yeah. Uh... Honestly, the journey has been very challenging, interesting, mm -hmm. and enriching in my life. Mm -hmm. I joined Tata's in 1977. That was my first job. Yeah. So while uh, I was being interviewed, the then Mr. Rusi Modi, so uh, I had a two choice. Uh, one is Tata Steel Jamshedpur, and second was the coal mines. Mm -hmm. So during the interview, I asked Mr. Modi, where you started, sir? He said, I started in coal mines. Mm. And I said, I would like to start there. So mm. he said, being a South Indian, I was ready to go to Dhamba, which is a, what do you call, domain of crime, money lending, and other things. He said, yeah. So I started my career there. Very honestly, it was uh, quite uh, experiencing for me a good learning about life. Mm. You know, we have always been Actually, living in the life of pain of plenty, which I call it, when mm. you have too much plenty, yeah. we have never seen the pain of poverty. Mm. So I saw there is a very big mix of simplicity with complexity. Mm. I started over there in coal mines, and it was a quite a successful stint there for six years. Mm. And at that time, I got an opportunity to join in Delhi, mm -hmm. a public sector in government, mm -hmm. because I was a slightly impatient person, because I always felt sense of inadequacy. I should do something more than what I am doing. Mm -hmm. And I had a very, uh, maybe a weird thought of that, always take risk, which many people didn't like my style, even my mm -hmm. family people. So I switched over to Delhi. So obviously there was a big shift of culture mm -hmm. from Dunbar to Delhi, both D to D, but they had two different yeah. cultures. Mm -hmm. So and the government working, bureaucracy handling. So it was another experience for three to four years. But again, I found that I don't think so that I am journeying to this culture. Mm -hmm. So I was called back to Tata Steel. Mm -hmm. So I was back in Tata Steel. So I spent considerable time in steel and I grew there. I think I was the youngest manager. You grew very fast. I got a good opportunity. Then from Tata Steel was taking over a plant, trying to set up a plant of cement plant mm -hmm. in Madhya Pradesh. Mm -hmm. So I was asked whether you will be interested. I jumped. I said, no, give me. I will let up, set up the cement plant. Mm -hmm. So I set up the 1.73 tons uh, clinker plant there, black tons. So in Madhya Pradesh, there was a different experience mm. in a different domain. Mm. So being a South Indian, everywhere people used to look at it, why this man is, you know, <laughs> hopping and jumping around without. Right. Uh, and everywhere I have been lucky enough to write success story. It's mm. not that I was getting shifted out of some place. Mm. So while I was there in MP setting up cement plant, finally we commissioned the plant. Mm. At that time, I got an opportunity that in Hyundai was trying to set up in Chennai, and Chennai is my base place. Mm. I am from Chennai. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. It may be my luck. So I was selected by them by the Koreans. Out of ten people, I was shortlisted which I was not prepared. Again, mm. you know, we are going through the, from the coal to steel to government to cement and to car. Mm. It is something which is totally diverse. Yeah. 
and uh, cultural diversity, thought process diversity, mm. everything was different, and MNC with different, and Koreans had different kind of perception in the country, right? With to their style and perceived. Mm. So I, I was the first Indian with them, wow. and luckily I worked with them till twelve years. I grew up till the rank of the director. I was senior vice president also. Mm. At that time, I thought enough. I must do something beyond this mm. because uh, I have gone through all the uh, products which is contributes to economy. Let me do something where I can give back. Mm. So the, basically, the urge to give back was coming inside. So the lion came into existence in 2007. Mm. That was in a small club meeting where the talk was going on with very senior managing director of a company. He said, Ramesh, why don't you start? I said, leave it. I thought of being consultant, advisor. That's a general behavior pattern we do. Mm -hmm. We become board members, etc. Yeah. All, we all went there. He said, no, start. I said, okay, let me try. So there, actually, the seed was so amazing. So tell me a little bit now about the Liam group and what do you do? Because you are a very big group now. Yeah, actually, you know, in life, I have always believed one thing. We have two things which always troubles us. One is social demand and other is personal demand. Social demands, we talk of career, profession and to be wanted in society. So mm -hmm. I call it a societal demand. Mm -hmm. We want to be wanted everywhere. Right. You know. But the personal demand I found is the passion, which was my inner urge to establish my own institution of power excellence. Mm. So I was debating myself what to start. So right. since I was in HR domain, mm. in this process of learning, I the HR human resource, mm. I could recoin it as honesty in relationship. Mm. That is the Actually, the principle, I thought, now let me try to give back to the people who have joining a larger company is a dream. They are deprived in the society. So Liam was conceived with the intention to pick up dropouts in country, mm -hmm. ITI diplomas, who could not pursue their education, and then take them in my company and put them in a large company like multinationals mm. and give them training for three years, make them employable. Right. With this intention to give back to society, mm. I started this company with a good intention. Mm. I can proudly say today in the 17 years, more than 80, 90,000 people have been hired, hired, trained and deployed and they have been suitably employed by us. We are great. Beyond this, we thought, I thought, let me, I said, I am a very impatient person. I diversified, not only, only HR. So what are the things which we can look into manufacturing process? Mm -hmm. So we focused on cost, quality, and productivity. Right. And unfortunately, when we talk of cost, we always in industries talk of cost of planning. But I said, no, cost of wastages, cost of power, cost, everything was taken into consideration. Mm. I categorized in people, process, and productivity, whether it is a cost or there is a quality and productivity. That was my strategy to each industry. Very so we created a, a job contract model and contract manufacturing model. Mm. So today we are manufacturing electric buses for Tata Motors. We are involved in electric buses. For a short time, we are involved with l &T for mm. shipbuilding. Then we are doing many. We are involved in power sector. Now mm. we have also signed with the Apple phone industry mm. with all the companies for supply of skilled manpower. Amazing. So that they can be utilized all the places. So I have about 65 sites in the country in India today. Mm. And we are now running about 14,000 people are employed in my company today. Amazing. We are just trying to grow. And we hope that as it grows, God is great. We have been fortunate. I'm sure, and I'm sure we will keep seeing you get bigger yeah. and bigger. But, you know, <clears throat> when I was reading and preparing for my conversation with you, 
there is a term that you use which is head count to brain count how does this work please explain this the india is the youngest population country in the world Correct. and you have so many people they are head counts for us mm. to make them brain count it is make them relevant to the requirement right see when we discuss about the employment employment opportunities are there but they should know what they should take mm. and how they Correct. so we are trying to convert them to brain count relevant to the skill them to the relevant right position and attitude etc that's why i put this punch line from head count to brain count mm. we don't want to give head count numbers like you know like in a lighter vein for polling we gather the people no we we i strategize as do more with less people i tell the industry you think about cost i will give you if you are running with 100 people and manage with 80 people for mm. so that way the strategy was evolved in all the industry mm. very interesting you also talk about fostering a culture of high productivity with minimum political interference in the workspace tell me a little more about this concept yeah yeah i have been uh... i have been able to sign many settlements union settlements in the country mm. i have always believed that if the management actually really thinks about their workers mm. why should they have union right you know can i see union is a forum which raises the your people's demand mm. so i always used to explain to everyone Mm. that in a house if the kids are having problem you as a father should know mm. that what is their problem and i handle mm. them rather than they go out to asking people to can you tell my father mm. that this so i started in every places i am not against a union or anything mm. i only say if we are able to be proactive and look after their requirement right it full requirement not unlawful requirement and reasonable then the culture it will be a culture of inclusive growth that means both worker and management together mm. can grow the industry so the focus will be industry today the focus is between the two who is who is more better than each other mm. Mm. you know so every place where i have involved ourselves mm. we are trying to imbibe the culture of togetherness mm -hmm. and work towards the growth of the industry amazing not towards it that great is great response great response thank you so much my next question to you is that you know today's human resources organizations are using incredible amount of technology i'd love to get yeah. your perspective on how are you using technology for managing this large number of people who you hire and support see if you really see now we have gone through you know we are in 1970s 80s 90s now is a digitalization area mm. uh, now the era so we have tried i always say all kinds of technological in, uh, involvement or interference is a tool to create a business ease of business and create business success right there are many that you have a cloud computing you have saas you have got everything artificial intelligence we are also working on artificial intelligence mm. so our aim should be how best we can respond to the client as well as the employee who has advanced through this tech involvement mm. technology should not become a fad to say hey, we have got this 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 mm. it should the ease of business ease of people they should feel comfort they say this company is very proactive in all aspects mm. so now technological advancement is very good these are the tools it may impact some reduction of the manpower but mm. that is not the issue right it is for us to rehab all those gaps mm. to the further growth see if we want to do something we expand our horizon for them mm. rather than telling them okay now you can exit from the company mm. 
I always say in a light well, we have a CEO. Either he is a chief executive officer, chief emotional officer, or he is chief egoistic officer, or chief empathetic officer. <laughs> okay. you know? I so love these stories. Uh, I always say that people join looking at the leader. So if we could try to reduce or if you go for a reduction plan, obviously, I was telling once addressing CEOs, that shows your incompetency, mm. your planning is poor. Mm. You should have a foresight, look at the market's response and try to work properly mm. rather than just dumping the people who are easily you can knock it off because mm. it is with your control. Mm. So I feel technology is very good today and we can, responsive time will be better. Mm. And we have been able to, and expanding my business is because of tech, mm. technology. Otherwise we have to have a very large fleet of people to manage the show. Can I, I can very probably say the entire 13,000 people is being managed today by only 40 people. Amazing. Fantastic. My next question is that, you know, given the incredible diversity of employees in our, of people in our country, what challenges do you and the companies you work with face when incorporating employees from diverse backgrounds? See, I, I always say there are two things. One is adaptability second is acceptability we have to create the platform to adapt to change and accept the change mm. and get the inclusive growth i can proudly say i have about 40 percent of my population are all female population in my company mm. out of thirteen thousand. so we have to create that kind of uh, See, I always say one is people should have a mental maturity for this change. Right. We have to create that psyche. Mm. Second is mindset change workshops. We have to conduct and train them mm. and make them to understand what is the new era. We should not resist to change. Mm. We should accept the change happily and bring the change for the benefit of all. Mm. That is the way we have created different forum, different grants, uh, processes, and also taking care of hygiene factor, mm -hmm. their security, environment, everything is taken. We have a CSR team separately from the places from where the catchment area, I take these kids, I look after those villages, mm -hmm. ensure development of those villages, mm -hmm. create a proper climate, mm -hmm. give those parents a kind of awareness workshop, why we take, what you are going to gain, et cetera, et cetera. Very so it's basically honesty in relationship, I said, sir. Mm. It's basically I've been honest in true sense to everyone from zero to hundred. Very well said. Very well said. Thank you. My next question is that, you know, in addition to all the staffing work that you do, you also told me that you are in manufacturing. Given the amazing stage that we are at in India with so many foreign companies coming in, what do you see as the future of contract manufacturing in our country? The contract manufacturing is going to be in thing in future, sir. Because every company's sustainability is becoming an issue. Right. The market is very dynamic. Too much of competitiveness. So mm -hmm. everyone wants to cut size within themselves. Yeah. So they want to hive out their own areas, which they feel that they are not being able to do best. Mm -hmm. instead of having them in the system. So contract manufacturing and also outsource, strategic outsourcing is the next era which is going to happen. And, and this is going to be in things. That's why you say in staffing industry, you have all varieties of staffing coming into the picture. Mm -hmm. Pre-COVID, post-COVID, you have all varieties. You can name it, you get the varieties in mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But in sense, actually in today, that every industry, the CEO wants to hire about 30% of his, you know, he, he may not agree it's his headache, right. but he mm. will say issues of concern, mm. which he would like somebody else to manage. Correct. Right. You know, so we actually, in a lighter vein, whenever I ask them, we become their sole partners. Mm. 
I said, I will take care of your issues of concern. You just relax, do your job, I will give you. So mm -hmm. that's why I introduced this system of contract manufacturing, where I say it's against delivery, not against headcount. Mm -hmm. I will produce against the production, you give me the payment or in whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Another thing I introduced, sir, I thought I should share with you. Yeah. In my company, I have hired all the retired people from the industries. Okay. You know, all the vice presidents of mm -hmm. Nissan, from Tata's, directors. You know, in our country, the knowledge is so much, which is just getting Absolutely. dumped somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I, all over India, in all my offices, all the senior retired people have been hired in my company and this is i'm just enjoying doing these things by building an institution of our excellence hmm. so retired heads are with me and when we sit together you can see 200 years of experience talks amazing. to each other come amazing. out of solutions amazing so I have time for two more questions for you again yes, when sir. i was reading about you uh you know there is i wanted to ask you about the success story who's of someone you have helped from you know looking for a you know from a rural background to working in a multinational i will give you a small example sir hmm. not much you can say multinational equivalent hmm. see once i was traveling to one city near to bangalore hmm. where my ashok leland i'll give you the name hmm. of the company hmm. where job was going on i was finding it very difficult something was not jelly so I stopped my car in a tea shop and I saw one boy selling SIM card. Mm. I felt I called him. I said, will you join me? Mm. And today that boy is actually heading 600 people in that company wow. of mine and giving productivity of 98%. Amazing. So like this, I can give you so many mm. uh, stories, hard reality case studies, because sir, I find it is not necessary. Even if I, when I was in Hyundai, I had mm. told them there is no need to go for premium. Second level, third level, if you get them and try to train them, make them to your requirement, they will be the biggest loyalist for you. Mm than these people who will become the job hoppers, mm -hmm. you know? And today I can say when we started Hyundai, all the technician trainees I brought it from down south with two tired, three tired, down south boys and manufactured for Sandro. So I personally feel that in our country, the, the what do you call, intelligent level is too high. The opportunities are not there. We mm. have to give them that breakthrough. Yeah, wonderful. And, and I you see amazing. Mm, absolutely. Right? I wish there were many more people like you who would give opportunities to young people in our country. But uh, my last question to you now, and you know, you have helped sure. so many young people and this, my conversation, our conversation will be heard by thousands of young people. What is your advice to a young individual starting off on their life uh, as a, as you know, in the corporate world, or as an employee somewhere, or as an entrepreneur. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'll put it in different manners, sir. Mm. Because see, today in our life, mm. all the uh, individuals have getting sandwiched between uh, making others to attract towards them. Mm means we have forgotten ourselves in our life. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say that let them not, we always undervalue our asset and try to compare with others, overvalue their asset mm -hmm. and feel unhappy. Mm -hmm. So the first advice is don't compare yourself. First, mm -hmm. try to understand yourself yeah. and see what's your threshold and what best you can do. There is no point dreaming too high and right. finally falling down flat in the ground. It is right. not that you can do. Second is, do 100% what you are doing. Mm. You cannot, because today, menu card is too big, sir. Huh. In 1970s, we didn't have menu card so much. Correct. 
So they feel if I don't do this, I will do this. No, each one is designed for specific activity and his ability in that particular area. So he has to first analyze his by whether you're doing SWOT or doing your his attitude, aptitude, mm -hmm. and try to understand in which he's going to be best. And one more advice, yeah. don't chase money. Make mm -hmm. yourself to make money to chase you. Very interesting. And on that note, and your three outstanding pieces of advice or your wisdom, don't compare with anyone else, give 100% to your work and don't chase money. Thank you, Mr. Ramesh, for having for speaking to me about your own amazing journey. I loved the way you so easily transitioned from coal to car, as you say in your own uh, profile. Thank you for talking to me about the Liam Group and all the amazing work that you are doing in the Liam Group. Thank you also for talking to me about your own philosophies of managing people, of managing businesses. And what came out very strongly was how transparent you are in your dealings with everybody you work with. Thank you for speaking to me. And Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.